AME Church, I apologize. <laughs> but Reverend Beeman, you brought it all back, Rev. Amen. I tell you what, the man can preach, can he? <laughs> to the whole congregation, I'm genuinely honored to be here. I sincerely mean that. And, uh, the White House on Tuesday said its Middle East envoy, Brett McGurk, was in Cairo for what it called, quote, active discussions aimed at securing the release of hostages held by Hamas in Gaza and securing a humanitarian pause in Israel's assault. Brett is in the region. Uh, he was in Cairo today, as a matter of fact, and he'll have other stops along the way. Here's White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby. The discussions are sober and serious. Uh, again, I don't want to get ahead of where we are or, or give you, uh, I can't give you odds on, on, on if and when we'll be able to get there, but the conversations are very sober and serious about trying to get another hostage deal in place. News of the talks comes a day after a report from Axios saying Israel sent a proposal to Hamas through mediators in Qatar and Egypt offering a multi-phase pause of up to two months in exchange for the release of all remaining hostages. A representative of Qatar said mediation efforts were ongoing, and Kirby on Tuesday would not say if the report was accurate. More than 100 hostages were released in a seven-day ceasefire late last year. But more than 100 are believed still held captive, and their families are turning to protest against the government. We wake up, we see what the, our prime minister says, we see what the Qatar says, what the Americans say, what the Egyptians say, what Hamas say. Um, every day is a struggle, every day is new. Itai Siegel is the nephew of hostage Keith Siegel and spent a night in the cold outside the prime minister's residence. We are where the prime minister is during the week. We are here to haunt him and to remind him that his job right now is to bring our loved ones back and nothing else. Israel has said its operation in Gaza is aimed at eradicating Hamas and returning all of the hostages taken when gunmen from the Islamist group attacked Israeli communities on October 7th, killing 1,200 people and taking 240 captives. Explosions shook Yemen's capital Sana'a early Tuesday morning as U.S. and British forces carried out a fresh round of strikes. The Pentagon said a Houthi underground storage site was targeted, as well as missile and surveillance capabilities used by the Iran-aligned group against shipping in the Red Sea. Reuters footage showed bright flashes from Sana's skyline, with audio of planes flying overhead. A senior U.S. military official who spoke on condition of anonymity said 25 to 30 munitions were fired, including from warplanes launched from a U.S. aircraft carrier. So far, eight rounds of strikes over the past month have failed to stop the Houthi attacks against ships in the area. U.S. officials say the strikes have hurt the Houthis' ability to carry out complex attacks. However, they have declined to offer specifics on what military capabilities have been destroyed so far. The Houthis, who control the most populous parts of Yemen, have said their attacks are in solidarity with Palestinians as Israel strikes Gaza. The Houthi attacks have disrupted global shipping and stoked fears of global inflation. جهوزية عالية للقوات الأمنية الآن قادرة على حماية أمن وسلامة وإهداف البلد حدود البلد الآن أصبحت أكثر أمن وأمان من خلال التحصينات ومن خلال ما اتخذته من إجراءات مهمة لمنع التسلل هذا كله 
انعكس على تسليم الملف الأمني اللي استطاعت الآن وزارة الداخلية قيادة وبنجاح خمس محافظات وتهيئت هذه السنة لاستلام محافظات أخرى وهذا يؤكد جهوزية قوات وزارة الداخلية لإدارة الملف الأمني أيضا قوات الجيش العراقي وما تمتلك من كانيات وقدرات في مجال مقارعة الإرهاب وحفظ الأمن والأمان في أغلب المناطق المعقدة جغرافيا Yeah, 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 yeah.